I'm constantly asked about better ways to learn improvising because it's complicated at the start. If you've never done improvising, if you're new to it, or if you're really confused by it, then stick around because in this lesson, we're going to talk about some ways that you can get started with improvising super fast. I'm going to give you some great skills you can use today. G'day, Nigel from Sax Cool. You know, the trick about improvising is having a good system, having a strategy or a game plan that you can use uh, to make great solos, and it makes the whole process of improvising much easier. Uh, I'm going to tell you about that in a second, but first of all, if it's your first time here, please do subscribe to the channel because I'm making new videos like this all the time, and I really don't want you to miss out on them. That way you'll get notified if uh, when the new videos come out, and you know, hopefully I can help you to improve your saxophone skills. Because that's what I do, I run Sax School, which is a huge online community of saxophone learners. We've got thousands of learners, and we've got a huge video library with hundreds and hundreds of lessons and loads of courses. And uh, you can get a 30-day trial, actually, at the moment to check that out at mcgillmusic.com. There's a link below the video here. But today's lesson is actually something I'm taking from Sax School and sharing it with you guys because I think this subject is so important. I created a mini course inside Sax School recently called Introduction to Improvising on Saxophone. And in that course, I take you through the whole process from being an absolute rookie with improvising, going through note choices, how to create your first solos, how to develop that creativity, and also some uh, give you some really good tactics like how to use pentatonic scales properly and blue scales properly. And we even then go through and look at learning a tune and how to improvise over that tune. So it's quite a big course. There's some bonus stuff in there about theory as well. Some really good stuff in there. And that's part of Sax School membership. But today, I'm going to give you the one of the first videos in that course for free, where we start to talk about some tactics that you can use straight away to get started. Now, if you're brand new to improvising, never done it before, then this would be perfect for you. If you've been improvising for a little while already, then you know this is going to be useful because it's going to be a reminder of the essential skills that you need in order to be good at improvising. So I hope you'll check it out and enjoy it. I'll catch you at the end of the video. Right guys, in this video we're going to get started with the very first bit of improvising ever. If this is the first improvising you've ever done, then don't worry, this is going to be dead easy and fun. And if you've been improvising before, then I encourage you to still work through this exercise because sometimes going back to the basics can really help you to unlock those little hiccups that can stop your development as you go forward. Now, what we're going to do with this exercise is dead simple. We're going to start improvising over a one chord groove and we're only going to use three notes. Now, I'm going to show you throughout this lesson series on the tenor saxophone, but we're also going to talk about the notes on the alto saxophone. So have your saxophones handy, and I'm going to show you the notes as we go through. And also, we're going to do a jam session in this lesson, so you need to have your saxophone handy so you can play along with me, and we can do some jamming together. Okie dokie, so here's the rules. In this exercise, we are going to start making up our own melodies, but we've got to stick to just using three notes. Let me show you those notes first of all. On the tenor, if you're a tenor player, then we're just going to use these notes. We're going to use the note G, we're going to use the note B, and we're going to use the note D. Okay, so G, B, and D. Now on saxophone, of course, we've got three different octaves to play with, so you could use those, those notes in any octave. So you could put another high G at the top, and you can put high B and high D up there as well. So those three notes really become a whole bunch of notes when you put it over your whole range. Let me show you the notes on alto. So for alto players, we're looking at these three notes. D, F sharp, and A. And the same thing, you can put this over your whole range. So if we keep going up in that pattern. Okay, so before we start talking about the rules, I'm going to start off by putting on the practice groove, and I'm just going to play through those notes for you over the band, just to show you what it sounds like. If you want to play along with me, that's fine. I'm just going to play two counts on each of those notes. I'm just going to go up, so D, F sharp, and A, 
and then the high D, and I'm gonna do it again over and over. Or on the tenor saxophone, it's gonna be G, B, D, and high G. Have a listen. <laughs> Okay, so you can hear how the notes really work over the backing. It's dead simple. We're only using those three notes, but they fit over the chord that's happening in the band. So let's talk about the rules for making up our solos, our improvising rules. Well, first of all, you need to just stick to using those three notes. The second thing is I really want you to think about keeping things super, super simple. So we're making up little melody ideas uh, in this exercise. Nice and short, they don't need to be very long. And like good sentences, they need to be they have a beginning and an end, okay? I don't want you to just play one long thing that goes all the way through. I want you to think about one short idea, maybe another short idea. And the third rule is just to keep the rhythm very, very simple. So as you're playing through, I want you to think about how the band is playing, where the beat is, and see if you can get your notes to line up with that beat. So we're playing in a very rhythmical manner. If you keep simple rhythms, simple melodies, and stick to those three simple notes, you're gonna have an awesome sounding solo. So just to kick things off, I'm gonna put that track on again, and I'm gonna play along and just make up a little solo, just using those three notes. I might extend over my range a little bit, but have a listen to the sort of melodies I'm making, have a listen to how rhythmical it is, and let me know if you think this sounds okay. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so that was good fun, and you could hear that those three notes really work as a, a tool for making up a melody over that backing. Radio, are you ready to have a bit of a jam with me then? Let's start doing some improvising together. I'm gonna to put that track back on, a longer version of the track though, and this time we're gonna take turns at it. So when the band starts, I'll do the first two bars, and I'll make up a little melody in those first two bars, just using those three notes, keeping my melody simple, keeping my rhythm simple as well. Then it's gonna be your turn. So you get a chance to do the same thing, making up a simple melody for those two bars, then it'll be back to me. So we'll swap forth two bars each, back and forth until we get to the end of this. Now if you want some inspiration on what to play, have a listen to what I'm doing and see if you can copy that. But really super important, stick to those three notes, make sure your melody ideas are very simple. We're not trying to create a super complicated jazz solo here, we're just trying to learn the fundamental concepts and also keep your rhythms very, very simple. So make sure it's very, very rhythmical. Here we go. <laughs> Awesome, how did you get on with that? I, th I love doing those sort of exercises because it's fun to play together. Now, I can't hear what you're doing, but I hope you're listening to what I'm doing and getting some inspiration from that. Um, because I think one of the great ways to learn improvising is to imitate other players. So listening to the way that I'm making up my little melodies and how rhythmical it is and how sort of structured it is and trying to emulate that in your playing is a great thing to do. 
Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you found that useful. If you did, let me know in a comment below because I'd love to know what you think about this sort of thing. And don't forget, you can get access to the entire mini course. This is just a little fragment from the start of the mini course and it's only one of the courses that you get with SAC School membership. But if you do go and grab our 30-day trial to SAC School, you can get instant access to the entire course, all the downloads, all the backing tracks, all the resources, plus get, part of, be, get to be part of our huge community of learners. There's uh, mini courses inside SAC School on ear training, other improvising skills, uh, blues skills, plus hundreds and hundreds of lessons on other tunes and solos and techniques, tons of stuff to keep you busy. And it's free for 30 days. So check that out at mcgillmusic.com. Don't forget to leave me a comment and subscribe if it's your first time here and I'll catch you next time.